My name is David Gomez Gamboa and I am Venezuelan. I come from Maracaibo, the Sul State. I am a university professor at the University of Sul State, specifically at the School of Law. And uh, I am the founder director of Aula Abierta, open class NGO. You can breathe the chaos uh, everywhere in my country. We face uh, shortages of medicine, food. Uh, the situation of the public services is really chaotic in some way. Imagine a place where you, ha you have to live facing blackouts of 10 hours to 16 hours per day. I am trying to describe a, what should be a modern city, a very big city of around two million of people without public transportation, without internet service, without electricity, without water, without gas. The outflow of Venezuelans um, has been very, very uh, huge. I mean, maybe the um, around 10 to 20 percent of the population have left the country. Imagine what happened in the context of the coronavirus situation. The hospitals are not prepared with the minimum provisions, with the minimum supplies, and so the situation right now is very, very concerning. In my country, the first thing that you face is a tension uh, regarding criticizing the government. Citizens are very afraid of speaking or about claiming in favor of their rights because in general everyone feels a, a fear because of being uh, maybe put in jail or maybe to be threatened directly by the government in the different ways that they used to do. Human rights defenders in my country are um, in the target of the authoritarian regime because uh, the government is not comfortable with the different denounces and concerns that we are registering in reports and that we are sending to or addressing or submitting to different international human rights bodies in international community, such as the United Nations once or the inter-American uh, human rights bodies. A critical thinking is not welcomed. And uh, mm, different uh, soci societal actors that uh, try to make visible a reality with a critical view are target. For example, university professors and also students who protest, who claims in favor of democracy, uh, are targeted uh, and the scientific knowledge is not allowed if the government feels uncomfortable with, with this scientific knowledge. And so research is almost impossible and so the classes are almost impossible. It's a dramatic situation because professors right now in Venezuela, university professors, are trying to survive, are leaving the country. Universities are uh, losing their best professors. What represents for the country dark era? Because uh, when scientific knowledge is forbidden or is under attack, the society faces uh, darkness. Also, it is very important to understand that the general policy um, imposed by the government, the de facto government, is the misinformation. So, as citizens, we understand that the data or the figures that the government is documenting, uh, we know that um, we can be in front of a fake information or a general lack of credible information. And so um, this misinformation 
context is very dangerous in terms of the increasing of cases um, in, of coronavirus. I um, wonder myself, uh, what can I do to face this situation? What um, can I uh, develop as human rights defender and as university professor to try to contribute to the democracy in my country? And uh, that was maybe the seed and the beginning of Aula Abierta. Uh, since that time, we began to work together, we developed a team um, with students and with also professors, and we began to prepare reports on those situations. Aula Abierta uh, want to defend and protect the human rights that are linked to university environments. Uh, first, the academic freedom, which is um, the main one, but there are other human rights, such as freedom of expression, such as freedom of association, the right to education, quality to education, etc. We understood that the relationship between academic freedom and democracy is very strong and uh, that when academic freedom is under threats, the democracy itself and the development in a society is also under threat. And we understood that the professors, the researchers who produce scientific knowledge, but also the students who participate in the educational process should be under protection. And um, two years ago, we identified that those patterns that were being registered in our reports about Venezuela were repeated in Nicaragua. Uh, under the government of Daniel Ortega, for example, or in Cuba, but also in Bolivia with Evo Morales. And we understood that, for example, when Bolsonaro in Brazil and when López Obrador in Mexico came to the presidency, they also began to uh, threaten the different universities and to produce any kind of budget aphyxia against the universities. And so we understood that it, it was not a problem of left or right thinking. We understood that it's a problem of human rights and a problem of regarding the authoritarian regimes, but also uh, regarding the situation of the democracy itself and the development. To defend democracy, in the context of an authoritarian regime is a risky situation. And we understand that. And we have the conviction that this is the work that our country demands us to do. You can be hidden, you can be silent, or you can produce reports, you can help to organize your people in your society, and the human rights NGOs, and the universities, and the different actors in the universities. When you face a risky situation, but you think about the contribution that you are mm, doing in favor of democracy and development in your country, and also in Latin America, you, feel, you should feel proud of it, and you should feel encouraged to mm, keep moving forward on it. Fortunately, I got the, the privilege to be selected. And so it has been a very important opportunity in my, in my life as a human rights defender and as a person also. During my stay in the Netherlands, I have like two different stages. <laughs> the one before the coronavirus lockdown and crisis, 
and the one during the coronavirus uh, lockdown. The first one was a stage in which I was involved with the different NGOs of human rights in the Netherlands, also with different universities actors, the human rights centers of different universities. And after the corona virus lockdown, we should shift all the meetings and the different organized activities to the online format. And so I participated after the lockdown in online uh, lectures, uh, having me as the lecturer, like, like, like the guest lecturer. We also film, record some videos, and uh, we prepare those videos for the students in Netherlands. Uh, and we also participate in some uh, screening documentaries in the online format. And so uh, we shift the way of attending my role as Shelter City guest uh, during the um, coronavirus lockdown. Maybe the most important thing is to have thought about who you are and what plans do you have for the upcoming future in your country. I think Utrecht is a very beautiful city, it's like a magic place. I every day try to get my, my bike and to go around the, the city and uh, I really love every canal, every building, especially the nature. I have um, enjoyed very, mo very much how the city uh, combines the architecture with the nature I really think that I am a privileged person uh, because of the possibility of living in the Netherlands and in Utrecht uh, in this time. Uh, and uh, I think uh, people has, have been very kind, very welcoming, very open with me. And thank you for that. <laughs>